days, now is around 10 o'clock. And of course, news time is around 10 o'clock at night. I love reading news from the New York Times, one of the best sources to find out the hottest news of today. And today, let's find out what's the hottest news. Okay, see here, and let's click right into it. Today's hottest news. Here's how abortion rights supporters were in conservative Kansas. Supporters of abortion rights won a huge and surprising victory on Tuesday in one of the most conservative states in the country, with Kansas voters resoundingly rejecting a constitutional amendment that would have let state legislators ban or significantly restrict abortion. Results were still coming in as the night wore on, but with more than 90% of ballots counted. The pro-abortion right side was ahead by about 18 percentage points, a staggering margin in a state that voted for President J. Donald J. Trump in 2020 by a margin of just under 15 percentage points. Here's a look at what happened. Abortion opponents underperform even in conservative areas. Going into Election Day, many observers believe the outcome of the referendum would be determined in increasingly Democratic areas, like the Kansas City suburb, that is, by whether enough voters turn out there to compensate for the very conservative lean of the rest of the state. But a portion opponents did surprisingly poorly, even in the reddest places. Consider far western Kansas, a rural region along the core Colorado border that votes overwhelmingly Republican in Hamilton country, which voted 81% for Mr. Trump in 2020. Less than 56% chose the anti-apportion position on Tuesday with about 90% of the vote counted there. In Greeley County, County, which voted more than 85% for Mr. Trump, only about 60% choose chose the anti-apportion position. We can talk about the cities all day long, but Kansas is known as a rural Republican state for a reason. Rural Republican areas cover enough of the state that they can, and almost always do, outvotes the city. The rejection of the admittant has as much to do with lukewarm support in the reddest counties as it does with strong opposition in the bluest ones. Yes, the swing area swung left. Certainly, though, the cities and suburbs deserve some credit. The comparatively slim margins of victory for abortion opponents in western Kansas left the door wide open, but abortion rights supporters still had to walk through it, and they did. County home to Kansas City, Ken, voted 65% for Joseph R. Biden, in 2020, but 74% for abortion rights on Tuesday. Neighboring Johnson County, the state's most populous, voted 53% for Mr. Biden, but more than 68% for abortion rights. What was striking, in fact, was the degree to which the picture was similar everywhere, from the bluest counties to the reddest one. Abortion rights performed better than Mr. Biden, and opposition to abortion performed worse than Mr. Trump. Turnout was high. We won't know exactly how many people voted, much less their partisan breakdown or demographic characteristic until the results are fully counted, but we can already say that statewide turnout was much higher than expected, nearly as high as it was in the last midterm election. Roughly 940,000 Kansas voted in the referendum according to preliminary New York Times estimates, compared with about 100 1.05 million people in the November 2018 midterm election. The gap between turnout and primaries and general election is usually much larger than that. Before Tuesday, 
the Kansas Secretary of State's office predicted turnout of about 36 percent, but as voting ended, Secretary of State Scott Schwab told reporters that anecdotal evidence indicated turnout might hit 50 percent, an extraordinary increase over what was expected. The Times 940 hundred thousand estimate would mean 49 percent turnout. The voters who would have been expected to show up on Tuesday under normal circumstances would mostly have been Republicans. That is not only because registered Republicans significantly outnumber registered Democrats in Kansas, but also because most of the contested races on the ballot were Republican primaries, giving Democrats little reason to vote, except to oppose the constitutional amendment. The Supreme Court scrambled the portion opponents' calculus abortion opponent's strategic decision around the eminent started with a choice to put it on Tuesday ballot in the first place. The primary electoral rate was expected to be small and disproportionately Republican, and it seemed like a reasonable supposition. Like the amendment, the amendment would have been a better chance of passing in that environment than on a general election ballot. The overturning of Roe v. Wade in June updated that strategy turning what might otherwise have been an under the radar ballot measure into a nationally scrutinized referendum on apportion rights. Many voters might previously have seen the stakes as theoretical. If the U.S. Constitution protects abortion rights, how much did it really matter whether the Kansas Constitution did? But then the Supreme Court undo the first part of that equation, and Kansas abruptly become an island of abortion access in the sea of southern and plain state banning the procedure. Groups on both sides blanketed the state up with millions of dollars in advertising. Democrats who would otherwise have stayed home, knowing their party had few competitive primaries on the ballot, turned out specifically to vote against the amendment. Supporters of abortion rights were gripped with a great political motivator anger. On Tuesday, the results were clear. And there's still a lot more about this abortion rights. What do you think about it? Do you agree or disagree with the abortion rights? So, bye-bye. I'll see you in the next New York Times news.